immediately reject this, and that comes on the heels of President Xi himself saying that this visit would be, quote, playing with fire. Where do you think this is going? Well, Martha, I support Speaker Pelosi's uh, trip to Taiwan uh, unconditionally, but with an explanation. Um, as, as petty and self-absorbed as Washington looks like, from the outside, you ought to see it from the inside. This, in, this entire exercise began with Speaker Pelosi's ego. Now, when you're talking about a nuclear war with China, you should take your ego out back and shoot it. But that's not Speaker Pelosi's way. She knows, after the midterms, she's not going to be Speaker anymore. She may not be in Congress anymore. So I think she thought up this trip as a way to say, well, look at me one more time. Uh, she talked to the White House, and some knucklehead, either on Speaker Pelosi's staff or the White House, leaked it. And on top of that, President Biden spoke publicly about it and said, oh, well, maybe she shouldn't go. Well, at that juncture, she had to go, because weakness or the appearance of weakness invites the wolves. Um, so I'm glad the Speaker went, but if she really wanted to... Uh, to demonstrate strength from the United States of America, she would have made it a bipartisan trip. She would have brought Kevin McCarthy along. She would have brought the Secretary of Defense along. But no, it's her. It's the Speaker Pelosi show. And the added benefit of all this is that, you know, we're not talking about inflation or crime or the open border or her husband's stock trades. Um, and that's well, the way this that's the way this town yeah. works. It, well, you know, I, I think uh, that that's insightful. And there's probably uh, quite a bit of, of truth in what you say. This is a legacy trip, to be sure. Uh, the last person to do it was Speaker Gingrich 25 years ago. And Nancy Pelosi will have uh, the recognition for doing that. But nonetheless, I, I want to listen to the language difference here, because you know, I think a lot of people watch this story and they say, well, where do we stand? on Taiwan. Do we want them to be free and independent? But here's John Kirby and what he said about that. Watch this. We have said that we do not support Taiwan independence. And we have said that we expect cross-strait differences, differences to be resolved by peaceful means. So the policy is that we do not support Taiwan independence, but I think it's a head scratcher because here's Nancy Pelosi's statement. Uh, she says our congressional delegation's visit honors America's unwavering commitment to supporting Taiwan's vibrant democracy. So it's pretty tough to figure out how you can be a vibrant democracy under the leadership of a communist government, Senator. Which one are we for? Well, I know what I'm for, and I think I know what a majority of Americans are for. They're for Taiwan's independence. Mm -hmm. Now, he, here's what's going on here. President Xi in China is working with, with Putin and Russia and the Ayatollah in Iran. And their ultimate goal is to have Russia dominate Eastern and Central Europe, have Xi and China dominate the Indo-Pacific, which of course includes Taiwan, and move into Sub-Sahara Africa, and have the Ayatollah dominate the Middle East. And they're working together. And that's not a world that is safe for America and Western values. Um, the fact of the matter is that we are not ready today, as ready as we should be, to defend Taiwan. And uh, instead of all talking about it, that's what we ought to uh, make our next step. Let's game out how we would defend Taiwan in case Xi tries to make a move, and that will likely deter, if not prevent, a move by President Xi. Senator, thank you very much. You uh, these are very tense times, and uh, we know what China's aims are, and we know that they are increasing their military live drills in the coming days, and we hope that there are no uh, accidents in the course of all of this.